Well, here we are, Pastor Brent, 2013. Woo! Wow, yes. <laughs> Guys, this is our Life of the Fellowship redone. We are mm -hmm. wanting to put this together on video for uh, the many of you that weren't able to make it out, or the some of you that weren't able to make it out, to our Life of the Fellowship that we had uh, just about a week ago now. Yeah. And uh, it was a great time together with the church. Great desserts, great refreshments. You missed out. Yes. Um, but anyways, we wanted to put this together just to be able to share with all of you, um, who we are as a church and uh, what God's been doing and what we see the Lord continuing to lead us in. And we wanted to take some time today to put this together on video and just to share with you. And uh, so we're going to talk about our life of the fellowship and about the church here. And uh, really, it all comes back down to the heartbeat of the church, essentially. Um, I want to take some time just to share our hearts and about, again, what we are about as a church, what's the heartbeat of Riverside Calvary Chapel? And it really begins with our mission statement. And uh, we know what our mission statement is, right? Oh, we do, yes. Okay, all right. It is know, grow, and show. That's essentially our mission statement here at Riverside <laughs> Calvary Chapel. Which I'm and sure really, everybody knew, yes. Everybody knew that, of yeah. course. But we just want to do it for review. And it just essentially sums up what our desire is as a church. We want to... Um, and this is taken from our website here, essentially here, regarding know, grow, show. Our desire is to know God, to grow in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and to show Him before the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we believe that one key way to do that is through the teaching of God's Word, which of course He's given to us to reveal Himself for us and to direct our lives. And that is why we give great emphasis, of course, to the teaching of God's word in our fellowship times, at yep. church, midweek service, whatever we're doing, we want it to really be centered on uh, and foundational in the teaching of God's word, which is going to aid us in our growth and discipleship and just growing the Lord, making us more like Jesus, to know, grow, and show. And so we want to look at a couple verses that talk about these various things, this mission statement, know, grow, show. We know in 1 John 5, 20, it says, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ, that is, or this is, the true God and eternal life. And Philippians 3, 8 to 11, it says, Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means... I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. And one more, John 17, 3. I love this verse. It says that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That sums up eternal life, is to know God. And so as we go from knowing him to growing in him, Ephesians 4, 11 to 15 says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, which is Christ." 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3 also says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And then, of course, we desire not just to know him and to grow in him. Those are important. But it means nothing if we're not taking that out, putting that into practice. And so this is where showing him mm -hmm. comes into play. That's important. And so a few verses on that. Proverbs 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter under the perfect day. Ephesians 5, 8 says, if, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, so walk as children of light. Be showing Jesus. 
1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So these are the things that we see regarding um, this no grow show, very important. And the way that we go about doing these things is something else that we need to look at. Now, first of all, I want to just make it clear that we do not presume to have a handle on these things above and beyond our brothers and sisters in the Lord and other churches. We don't have a, a staple on this. We're not the only church that's, you know, teaching the word or desiring to do these things. We're one among many. But this is something that we want to make as the, the foundation, the groundwork for our church here. And, of course, in order to see these things come into play and, and structuring our church, seeing the model of our church, we go all the way back to Acts chapter 2. Verse 42, which we see as the beginning of the church, but also giving us the real foundation for the church. Now, what do we see there at the beginning of the church? We see simply that they were once devoted to the word, to fellowship, to communion, and to prayer. Those are the essentials to a healthy church. As you know, we give great emphasis to the teaching of the word of God. We desire to go through it verse by verse, chapter to chapter. As we started this church back in 2002, yeah. that's a long time ago. It's that's a while now. 11 while. years or so now. Yeah. Going back a long ways, and we've had the joy of being able to go through um, a lot of the Word of God. As to date here now, we've been through 45 books of the Bible, presently working through uh, books 46 and 47, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Wednesday night. And uh, so we've been able to go through a lot of the Word, but again, we desire to be those that are allowing the Word of God to grow us, to to show us God, to make us more like Jesus. And we believe that it's the word of God that's paramount for the growth of the believer. And in the early church, fellowship was certainly a big part of seeing that all come together. That was the way that they were able to live out the word among one another. It says that they were together and had everything in common. It's often been said that the church is not an organization, but it's an organism. I think that's so uh, uh, perfect and a great way to look at the church because we're a living being who is to be active, right? We're growing and we're, uh, we're helping one another. And Pastor Ronnie's going to be talking a little bit more about the body coming up and we'll save that all for them. But we are to be working together, encouraging, edifying, supporting one another. And the early church also, it says, continued in um, communion, the breaking of bread, it says. And I believe that was going to the Lord's table. Again, that's so important because it's there at the Lord's table that we, again, remember and recognize that we are sinners in need of God's grace, that it's Him alone that saves us. It's not through our good living, righteous acts that we do. It's through Jesus Christ alone that saves us. And, and they continually went to the Lord's table and reminded themselves of the work of Jesus that saves them alone. And so that's where we desire to come to the Lord's table. We do that uh, the first Sunday of each month, and we could be doing that a whole lot more. It would not hurt at all. But we make sure that we, the first Sunday of each month, is our time of communion where we just want to remember the graciousness of our Lord and saving us by the work He did for us on the cross. And prayer. Prayer was, again, a very key component of that early church. It, uh, Oswald Chambers says that prayer does not fit us for the greater work but rather prayer is the greater work. Sometimes we think prayer is that one thing that we need to do in order to get somewhere else, and it's just that you know menial kind of thing that we need to do and perform to get what we want, but prayer really is becoming the greater work because it's making us more like Jesus. You know, It's hearing his heart, and it's changing us. Prayer, we sometimes think, is going to change God to do what mm -hmm. we want, but prayer, in fact, is changing us, and we desire to birth everything that we do as a fellowship here in prayer. We want to be led of the Lord, we want to hear from the Lord, and we want everything that we do to be birthed in prayer and to come from that place of prayer. And that's certainly vital and important. We take time Friday mornings here in our, in our ministry center that we're sitting in right now mm -hmm. to just open this up 6.30 to 7.30 to come in and prayer. You don't have to come for the whole time. You can come in for a little bit on your way to work and just come in and pray. Wednesday nights, we take time to pray. Prayer is available Sundays after the service, and so we just really want to make prayer something that's very important and vital here in the church at Riverside Calvary Chapel. And another thing regarding our church that we want to talk about, the heartbeat of the church here, is that we desire to be uh, spirit-led and just keep things simple in a sense, not wanting to jump ahead, 
get ahead of the Lord's leading, but we want to be spirit-led in all that we do. It's got to be simple because, well, you have a couple simpletons <laughs> sitting right here. And uh, yeah, we've boy, we're not, not, we're not going to yeah. be too complicated yeah. here. And uh, so we desire to keep things simple. But in a sense, we want to keep ourselves from trying to handle everything and deal with everything. We want the Lord to be the one that's leading all those things. And so it's easy to look at what we all think needs to be done and how to go about doing it. But sadly, what happens in doing that is then it begins to become a man-driven work. It begins to be um, something that's uh, just, like I say, ambitious or man-driven rather than saying, what do you want us to do, Lord? I, I want us to be active and I want us to be, um, yeah, I want us to be proactive in the things that we're doing here, but I want it to be because the Lord's put that on our heart, that it's spirit-led and uh, not trying to make things happen in ourselves. I've been a part of churches where it begins to become very much, you know, well, what do we see that needs to be done? Let's just do it and let's just make it happen. And, and it becomes yeah. very man-driven and it becomes absent from really a spirit-led thing. And I want us to be a church that's spirit-led, um, that's being active, definitely, being used of him, but seeking him first and making him the one that's, causing him to be the one that's leading everything that we're doing. And so those are some of the things that we see as the heartbeat of the church. And, and the one verse that I love that has been a real, again, staple verse here at Riverside is Zechariah 4, 6, which says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And that's something that we will do well if we keep before us, that it's not through ourselves, it's not through our might or strength that is going to make things happen, but it's through the work of the Lord, by his spirit, says the Lord. And that's what we desire, that everything that is done is birthed out of the spirit and led of the spirit. So these are some things that we see as the heartbeat um, of the church here. And when we look at the heartbeat of the church, we know and, and again see that it's really, again, a body that's at work here, a living body that's at work, and that's important for the functioning of the church. And so, mm -hmm. Rand, you're going to talk a little bit about just the body of the church, and I think we've got a video that we're going to play. Sure. You go let's ahead, do that. Run the video. Uh, let's see if we can make that happen. Let's get right into uh, the body, because Pastor Brent, as he said, this isn't the Brent and Randy show. This is something that God wants to do and involve every single person within the fellowship. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 12 and uh, just listen to what the Lord has to say about all this. <coughs> it says in verse uh, 1, Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. I uh, can't help but throw in that little bit on, you know, American Idol and those things we watch on TV. Um, so I wanted you to know that uh, no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of ministry, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us, which is so awesome. Verse 7, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. And what an incredible concept that we can, as a body, help each other. 
Verse 8, to one person the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice, to another the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else this one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He and he alone is the one who decides which gifts a person should have. Mm -hmm. So the human body now, if we look at it as a, as a body of parts, uh, is very important for us to understand. In verse 12 it says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. Just like in a fellowship like this. Um, you're the head, oh, no. I'm some other body part, and the rest of you are the, the rest of the body. Christ is the head. Christ is the I'll head. Be the, Let's clear that up. Christ is the head. You're, I'll, be, I'll be one of the toes or something. You know, can I do that? You can be a toe. I'll be a toe. I called you a tool, I think, one time. But Yes, you did. But, uh, At our last Life of the Fellowship, Randy yeah, said that I, I was just a tool, a tool that God right. used that... Just like any other tool, but... You are. I am a tool. Of, yeah. Thank you. Michelle really liked that. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. I got saw that on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, verse 13 says, some of, the, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body, one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I'm not a hand... That does not make it any less a part of the body. If Pastor Brent says, well, I'm not a foot, so I can't go out and do this. I'm only the toe. The toe, yes. Then, uh, you know, that just would stop the whole church, but it's just not true. It takes every part. In verse 15, or 16, it says, and if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? Of course not. 17, if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if you were, the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. And how strange a body part would be if it only had, or a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. Yes. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Nope. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary part of the body. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that. That's a very important part of this. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require the special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. And that is such a critical part of this whole understanding that we need to be involved with each other, know what's going on in our lives, mm -hmm. be willing to open up and care and bear one another's burdens. That's good. And if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. Mm -hmm. And if one part is honored, then all the parts are glad. And we need to be able to do that as well, yeah. is to rejoice when things are going well in one part of the body. You know, we come here Sunday after Sunday and Wednesdays, and we get into the Word of God, and it's important that we be those who begin to put these things into practice, these things that we've been learning, the things that, yeah. as Pastor Brent teaches us, um, we get more understanding of who God is and how we're supposed to be functioning as a church. And we need to not only get all this information taken in, but we need to take it out to a dying yeah, world, to true. a world that doesn't know Christ. And the more that I get out to see the world and talk with people, the more I realize they have no concept of who Christ no, is. Exactly. It is getting, especially our young people. Yeah. They have no idea who God is, what this is all about. You talk to talk to kids today and ask them about Jesus. Some of them never heard. Jesus. It's amazing. Who's Jesus? To think that How's that even possible? That's even happening How's today. How's it even possible that somebody yeah. growing up today does not know who Jesus yeah. is? And yet it's true. And, and I encourage you guys, go out, start sharing um, Jesus with people, mm -hmm. and you'll get some pretty interesting um, responses. Yeah. People that are just... I never knew. I didn't know. Yeah, it's good. And that's the purpose of the church. You may feel like that's not your responsibility. You may think, well, it's guys like Pastor Brent and Pastor Randy and maybe a few others that are, have that sort of um, ability to go out and talk to people. But it's not the, it's everybody's responsibility to get out there, yeah. share the gospel, and tell people the good news. Because if we're just Jesus relying is. on us to, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a big trouble. A lot we're of trouble. trouble. Yeah, so yeah, yeah don't do that. I work 12 right. hours a day and nobody even gets to see me, <laughs> so I'm not doing much during those 12 hours. So we need everybody out there. And everybody getting out there. It says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers 
for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. That's us, guys. For the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to, per to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, yeah. from whom the whole we get the whole body. Now, the body is joined and knit together by whatever by, by every joint and uh, is needed by every joint and according to the effective working by which every part does its share, it causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Now, we look at a, a baby. We've talked about baby yeah. before being a good example. Mm -hmm. You know, when you first get, bring that little newborn that baby home. So cute. Um, you know, they're usually quite quiet when you first bring them home. And then they, find out, then they find out that they have... They can make sound. Oh, yeah. And away they yeah. go. Oh, boy. But if you watch a baby as it begins to progress, and we're, we're relating this to like a Christian walk, as you just get saved, mm -hmm. you're a brand new baby. We see this little baby who all of a sudden you realize, hey, he just rolled. You know, he was here, <laughs> and now he's over here. Hey, this little guy figured out how to move. Look at that. He gets excited. Yeah. I, I did something. Next thing you know, the little guy's starting to poke his head up mm -hmm. a little bit, oh, put yeah. some weight on his shoulders. Then all of a sudden his little hind legs come up, and he's, he's going to start crawling pretty soon. Next yeah. thing you know, you had the little guy over there, and now he's across the room. Oh, yeah. And you're Oof. thinking, how did that happen? Yeah, that's that great. Uh, <laughs> but that's not enough. He needs more. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's walking around the furniture. You know, he tries, he pulls himself up, or she pulls herself up. And then next thing you know, they're taking steps. Yeah. Just long after that, they're walking, they're running, and it's exciting, and it's cool. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And that's what it needs to be for us as Christians. We don't just get saved and go, great. All right, it's done. Mm -hmm. No, you're only just beginning. Oh, yeah. And if we don't exercise, what's going to happen? He exercises, I don't. See? There's a difference. Oh, Look. come on. Right? No, you're, so you plump up. Fit. Yeah, looking real fit. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be hard to move if you don't get around to moving. Even your yeah. joints need to move. They need action. They need to be going. And that's what it's like with our walk. We need to be exercising. Yeah. Sure. Getting out, exercising our faith. Uh, and that's so important. And that's mm -hmm. the kind of church that we want to be. We exactly. want to be a body of believers where people are excited to get out and use their uh, joints to get out and tell yeah. people about Jesus and take all this incredible teaching that we get so blessed by. Oh. Oh. Jesus Lord, is it's... blessing us through you, Pastor Brent. And it's great. And it's great stuff. And so that's the kind of fellowship that we want to be. And, and the reality is, regardless of whether you teach from the front or you're the greeter at the door, or you're the person who's taking care of whatever the needs are in the fellowship, yeah. that's what's so important. Exactly. Every person has a part to play, and that's just yeah. that's what we're trying to emphasize. That's, that's the biggest thing that we want to get across right yeah. now, is to know that this is a church where we are a body together, as you're so effectively sharing, that yeah. we're a body, and every person has a part in the body. This is a body here. Every person is important. <clears throat> and needed for the functioning of the body. Yeah. There's a part for everybody to play here in the church, and we desire to see the body coming together, everybody fulfilling their part and blessing the body and just showing Jesus in all that we do. Yeah, and we'll think of how important it is for the, the prayer warrior, the yeah. person that we don't even really realize is one of the key players in this because they're spending time in prayer. Exactly. They're, they're, um, they're not seen. Yep. They're not getting any kind of attention for it. Nobody knows about it, really, for the most part. God knows. Yep. And that's really what's the most well, important thing. You look at some knows. of our organs or vital yep. things in our yep. body, the ones that aren't seen, oh, boy, we're yes. so glad they're there because they're keeping the body functioning. And if right. they weren't there, yikes, not good. So. Well, yeah, you just wait until yeah. one of those body parts fails and you yeah. realize how, well, you how, realize how needed it is. So, yeah. It's good. Well, you know what, guys? This brings me to another point that we want to touch oh, on. Good. It's a yeah. very important part, and it's something that we're excited about. Yeah. Um, and it's going to need you as the body to be a part of what we're doing. Uh, Fraser Point. Mm. It is um, a, a name we've been putting out there because it's important yeah. to us, Fraser Point. Uh, you know, for you, if you want to know where it is, you know, we can share with you. I'm hoping that all of you know where it is, yep. that you've been checking it out and praying, praying it, driving yeah. in the parking lot and just spending some time oh, in yeah. prayer and saying, Lord, hey, if this is what you have for us, then we're ready. So Fraser Point, it is a building. It's an empty building that we have as a church been, uh, or as a church body looking to uh, lease yes. so that we can have a facility, a building that we can uh, do all this incredible ministering out of mm -hmm. and just invite uh, the community to it. But yeah. anyway, um, good. 
We're not, we don't desire a building just because we're tired of set up and tear down, which has been, what, 11 years now or something like that. Yeah, close to that, yeah. But you know what? If we have to go another 11 years, we do it. We're good with it. Because it doesn't matter. No. Uh, we just want to serve the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go after a building because we think that will uh, make us a legitimate, legitimate ministry. Got nothing to do with that. No. Okay? Uh, that's not our purpose. That's not our intent. Uh, we, and our intent and our desire is to be able to reach out to our community. That's yeah. what's so important to yeah. us. We want to be able to go out and reach the lost. Right. I mean, we just talked about how there are so many young people that have no idea who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. We want to be using that facility, that yeah. building, strictly for the purpose of reaching those people. Exactly. Uh, and that that is something that we're very close to, right? Very close. We're, we're, we're like, yeah, we're so... It's we're just, ready to sign the lease. Yeah. It's just coming together with a few <clears throat> minor things, but we're ready to sign that lease. It's very close, so keep, keep praying about that and... Uh, Everything to go through. Right. And so um, what I'm going to do now is, this is just a quick little play on, um, it's just for fun. This yeah. is for fun. I'm going to go through some scripture. Uh, it comes out of um, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 27. I've changed it up a little bit. All okay? right. And I'm not doing it because I'm trying to, to change the scriptures. I just thought this would be kind of cute. So I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Okay. So this comes to, you know, when we're talking about this building is empty that we're going to lease. Yeah. It's empty needs to be finished inside. So oh, yeah. let's look at it this way. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. And here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church when it comes to building a new facility for us to meet in. Okay. First are framers, I like okay? it. Yeah. who lay out the walls to divide the rooms. That's important. Okay. Second are the electricians, mm -hmm. right? We need power. Got to have, okay? have sound, got to have, have, have all lights. these things, got to have lights. Yeah. Right? So we need them to lay the wiring and all those types of things like that. Third, we need plumbers. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. They lay the pipes so we can have water. You know, get thirsty, you need something to drink, you want to wash something, have a kitchen. Need those. We also need those who do drywall and mudding. Yep. Very important to have drywallers and mudders. That's um, right. And if you're here and you're a drywaller and mudder, you're needed. <laughs> <clears throat> those are the gift of, well, painting. Yeah. Because after you drywall and mud and you've done your taping, cover it up. And it looked that nice. So we got to cover it up with some nice paint. So we need some painters. Uh, so that everything looks warm and clean and, I like and, that. and nice like that. Right? We also need people who can lay carpet and flooring. Oh, yeah. Very important as oh, well. Yeah. Right? We, uh, we need those who love finished carpentry, yeah. building kitchens, bathrooms, that sort of thing. And those who have the gift of leadership. Okay. Right? Definitely. Got to arrange we, it. Because we need somebody who can organize all these workers yeah. and these trades. And those who speak words of, and this is very important, motivation and Ooh, encouragement. words of motivation and encouragement. Right. And you're why doing, do we, and why do we need that? you a great job, Randy. Why do you're we need that? you a great job. We need that because when our volunteers have been working until like 3 in the morning, we got to keep them going. That's keep right. Keep them going, right? We're not going to let this project just kind of go stale. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. You don't right. have to really, um, we'll let you go home by at least one. So, as scripture would say, are we all framers? No, 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 not a framer. No. Are we all electricians? Oh, no. that would be dangerous if I wired this building. Yeah. Okay, plumbers, no. same thing. Yeah, be dangerous. Not good. Um, do we all have the power to drywall and mud? No. Most people can kind of do it, but it doesn't Someone, look that good. No. So, and then painters. You know what? Painters is a fairly easy one. That's pretty. So general. we should have some painters going on around yep. here. Do we all have the ability to speak motivation and encouragement? Sure. Well, we should. We should. Yes, and we can. Every every single. But person some are can. really good at it. But some are a lot better. Yeah, yes. really good at it. Because of those people who will be working till the wee hours yes. in the morning and they need some, you know, we need people to make coffee for them. Yeah. To keep them awake. That thing, things like that. Yeah. Do we all have the ability to interpret whether we should use carpet or tile? Or colors? I'm terrible at that. Like if we did colors, what no, would it look I'm, like? Yeah, it would be bad. <laughs> it'd be bad. I don't think it would be the best looking no, place. So good. that's what we're seeking. And that's like what that. you should be earnestly desiring is to find out what is it you're good at. Every person here in our fellowship. Yeah has something that we don't even know they can do. Oh, yeah. And we'd be blown away when we realize what this they can do. This is a great opportunity. And that's why God does these things. Put that into place. Yeah. That's why God does these things is to bring this out in the it's body. Good. I like All that. these talents and abilities that we never knew, and it's cool. And it's yeah. going to be a great time of just building the body and having fun. It's going to be fun. Right. Awesome. So we're looking forward <clears throat> to that. Yeah. And uh, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for the to, to build up the body, not just build numerically. That's not the, the heart desire it's to build the body together yeah. and to see everybody having a part and and, uh, and just being used to the Lord. This is going to be great. And, and we desire, like you said, to, to have a place that we can call home so that we can see some great effective outreach taking place. And that's really the heart of it, to see lives yeah. changed with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we don't want to go into this just to have a building. We don't want to just... 
become inward, not at all. Uh, this isn't to validate us at all. This is just to say, Lord, give us a place that we can really see some effective ministry taking place here now for you, Lord. That's the heart. So yeah. be, continue to pray for these things Absolutely. and to see how you yeah. can be helping and involved. In, and again, you may not know what to do. Pray. That's a big one as well. So just continue on in that. And so along those lines, we want to talk about some of the things that we've been able to do this past year and, and just how the Lord has led us and some of the things that we've been involved in and wanted to share with you just to give you a bit of a summary of 2012 and what's been going on. Um, first of all, we have seen um, two mission trips in 2012. We have been able to go down to get a team down to Rosarito, Mexico. And this has now been uh, our eighth time eight down times, there yeah. as a church and taking groups down there. And it's been a lot of fun to be able to, to do that um, and just to be involved in the work going on there through Victor and Sonia Merrill and Rob and Cindy Lee and Christian Hudson. And um, we're just glad for the work that's continuing on just a small part we get to play and heading down there, taking teams down there and just um, continue to uplift these guys in prayer uh, financially helping them and, and the like. And so we're, um, yeah, wanting to continue this ministry on. So be praying about how you guys can be involved in that. But we're thankful for the two trips we've been able to take down there um, this past year. Now, we've also um, seen the sale of our Pitt Meadows building. Uh, that was something that has been a part of the plan all along since we had brought the two churches together was to see the church cell, and then to relocate yeah. into a, a more central location. And the sale of that building took a long time, longer than we had thought, mm -hmm. but it finally went through in June of 2012, and we're thankful for the Lord's provision. We're glad it went to another church, and there's ministry continuing on there, so yeah. we're excited for that. But now the Lord has given us the means to continue on now, and that's where this Fraser Point building has come up, and he's given us the means to be able to move forward now yeah. into the original vision of the church here and to continue on in those plans. So we're glad for that. And we also saw this past year our first church camp and youth camp take place. And we did that just at a, a place called Camp Coyote in South Langley. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we did our Sunday service out there. We, we went and did the whole, you know, Sunday school games, old style. You know, this is going old school. This is when I was growing up. And we used to do like the three-legged race, the sack race, all those fun things. We did them all. We had some injuries, and it just added to the fun. But uh, We always do. When you're it was good. It's some face planning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're right. And uh, so we had a church camp for a, a few days and just a real blessed time. And we're praying about doing that again. This year, youth camp was a real success. Um, we had just some great times of devotion together and activities, and I think all the youth really enjoyed it, so we're glad that we could do that. Awesome experience. And then we had our vacation Bible school in July, and that was, again, now an ongoing thing that we've been a part of in the community. Uh, that was our 10th VBS that we wow, have done, and uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, we did Incredible World, Amazement Park, and it was just a real great outreach to the kids, and um, we're thankful that we get to be able to do that. Thankful for the many people that are assisting us in the VBS, whether it be in costume or set design or uh, leading a group or, or leading a certain area of VBS. We're thankful for the many that, that help us because we need it's a lot a big, of help. We have about 70 kids yeah. that come out to these things, and so we're glad for that. So yeah. um, always a great time. So we're great. Grateful for the um, things that the Lord did through VBS too, and just ministering and moving in these kids' lives. And we also, this past year, got to go and help Kelowna Calvary Chapel put on their first vacation Bible school. And so we went up to Kelowna with a team, and we're assisting them in their VBS, and again, had a great time uh, doing that. Uh, a lot of fun, and so we're just glad for these things that the Lord's been able to lead us in and help us to do, and just to be able to have outreach and and things like that. Now, Ryan's going to talk about our, our financial situation and just using that, uh, looking at this past year financially. Just so you know, I have no idea who gives to the, the work here as far as specific ties and offerings go. Um, I know what comes in, but I do not know who gives, so um, I have no idea about that. So if you're ever feeling guilty around me, like you're going, oh, I didn't tie the last couple yeah. of Sundays, and oh, I better say something to Pastor Brent, don't bother, because I don't know. But then when you tell me, then I do know, and then I 
need to really pray for you and pray for repentance. No, I don't do that. But um, Randy does, however, yes, is I, more involved in that area. So you can yeah. just share maybe just generally how things are looking there. Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank all those who do give and support this fellowship because, uh, wow, I mean, God, you know, we understand God doesn't need our money. No. Right? Sure I mean, doesn't. if he, he can do all this, he doesn't need us to be doing it. So if you're going to give to this yeah. fellowship, do it cheerfully. Yeah. Um, do it as you're led by the Lord. And uh, we're just excited because uh, obviously this is a fellowship who has been willing to give and yeah. we've been blessed. Uh, yeah. You know, it's important for us to let the members know that uh, what our financial situation is. And when I say members, yes. uh, <laughs> I'm not that. saying you may be sitting in the chair going, oh, I don't know if I'm a member. <laughs> Should I be listening to this message right now? Uh, uh, if you call this fellowship your home, if Riverside yeah. Covered Chapel is your home, you're a member. Welcome. Welcome. And uh, that's how we think of you as a member. Of we do not family. have formal membership no here where you no fill out forms no. and you make a covenant to the no. church. We don't have formal yeah. membership here. But if this is your home church, you're a member. So right. glad to so, have you. So what we want to share with you is that God has been so incredibly faithful. Amen. That he, we have met all our, our goals. We had a, uh, a budget that got completely met. There were mm -hmm. no issues. God, in fact, has done things that are even more incredible than we could ever imagine with the finances lately. I mean, we never thought yeah. we'd even be in this position yeah. where we'd be able to look at going into a, a facility. Exactly. So that in itself is, a, is incredible. And mm -hmm. we believe as a Calvary Chapel that where God guides, God provides. God provides. Amen. Right? Uh, I, I shared, and I've shared this before, and I just wanted to share it one more time just so you guys understand the heart behind this ministry to some degrees. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about when Pastor Brown, when this huh. church first started, uh, he was working. He had a job. And, uh, you know, we were a small church, so you could kind of handle it. Sure. But as the church started to grow, we realized, no, Pastor Brent needs to be able to go full-time ministry. And so uh, myself and another one of the elders, uh, there was just two of us at the time, we, uh, we basically just both felt that it was time for you to go mm. uh, full-time ministry. So we asked him to put together a budget. Like, what do you need to survive, just to survive? No extras, <laughs> no, you know, fancy stuff. Just what no, do you... No golf allowance. Nothing, that... no, no golf allowance. We need to revisit that. No Tim that. Hortons coffee. We nothing. need to revisit that, by the way. Okay, oh, anyway, so go ahead, though. Right. All right, okay. So anyway, what happened was we looked at his budget, and uh, as much as the budget was in line, it was, like, way out of our, our financial ability. Uh, we looked at it and went, oh, like, we, we don't have enough people yeah. currently, <laughs> right. you know, giving to this fellowship to do this. But we did feel led by God. And, yeah. and uh, Pastor Brent as well felt, no, it's time. We're going to just do this. Mm -hmm. And if God's in it, he'll provide. Yeah. So uh, I remember the first uh, Sunday that after you'd quit your job, oh, yeah. and it's like, okay, he's quit his job. Let's <laughs> we'll see what the Lord does. And I remember uh, we counted the, the offering, and we just chuckled because it was like nothing. It was the worst offering I think we'd ever had, offering. ever. Yeah. And so all we could do is just laugh and go, you know what? <laughs> we believe that God wants this to happen, so he is going to provide. And I have to say, yeah. have you ever gone without food? No, praise the Lord. Have God's ever, been good. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he, he just, and we don't yeah. know how he did it, but somehow he met the need. Yes. And uh, we're going ahead in Fraser Point in the same fashion. Yes. If he's guiding, and this is his, his um, work for us, this is his direction he wants us to go, he is going to provide. Exactly. So in that, we don't have to be afraid or scared or, you know, apprehensive about it. We just have to trust and know that this That's is right. what God wants. So, yeah. So thanks for your faithfulness and giving. Yeah. God's God's good, and we are are so blessed to be in a um, you know in a good spot mm -hmm. financially here. Yeah. And we just continue to pray that uh, we and everybody involved just be good stewards of this. This is the Lord's money, and we want to be wise, yes. good stewards and of it. So we need keep everybody's us in prayer, prayer that. just to to keep us going on this yeah. stuff. So. And the last one was uh, our retreats that we had. Right. Yeah. Uh, that well, was, actually, we did retreats this year. It was this year, but it was yeah. in the beginning of the year. So we're kind of January. tying that into our summary of last year. Right. So, um, you know, uh, the men's retreat was uh, it's probably the most fun men's retreat I think I've, I've been It was on. fun. It was, it was a time. lot of fun. We, we rented a bus. We didn't rent a bus. Actually, God provided a bus. How about that? Look so, at that. A person in the body had access to a bus, so we didn't have yes. to pay anything for a bus. Amen. Took a ferry ride, which was cool. That was good. Got you guys on a boat. That was yep. fun. And then... Uh, just the guest speaker at that conference was just, I don't know, he was on that day. We, Gail we just, the teaching Fun was guy. fantastic. Um, yeah. The ride home was great. We just had a good. great time as a bunch of guys just getting to know each other, you know, sharing what's on our hearts and um, just getting to know each other better. And it's such an yeah. important part of the, the body again. Yeah. Knowing who That's are right. we, who's sitting in those chairs, yeah. you know, what do I know about these people? And getting to know each and every person better and being yeah. able to just, you know, um, 
be glad when they have good times and that's be right. able to share in their burdens and their, yeah. and their struggles when they're going through a exactly. difficult patch. So that was great. Ladies retreat, I'll let you speak it was on just that because so, so. I think you showed it. It was just so-so. So yeah. we'll just move on. It was, yeah, you know, ladies retreat. It was all right. They... Actually, they did, they did three retreat. days because they, they can't get days. it done as quickly as we do. They need a lot day. more help. Yeah. And so three yeah. days of a retreat. Ours was yeah, one day because it's all Not we needed. Not even one day, really. One a half a day, really. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, they did three days because they needed a lot more time yes. with the Lord yeah. to grow and just to yes. learn. So, um, and they and, need No, it. They okay, need we're kidding. But they, they had a great time. And mm -hmm. um, we had Cindy Lee, our own missionary from Mexico, yeah. come up and speak. And she did a great job, and it was a real awesome time. The ladies just sharing together and the Lord moving, and we heard great reports from many mm -hmm. of just a fabulous yeah. retreat. And so we're, we're glad for that and um, just a good time. So thankful to the Lord for yeah. allowing us these opportunities so, to so. just get away and to hear from Him. Yeah. So what we want to do now is just kind of move into um, looking ahead now into 2013. Mm -hmm. And again, as we do this, of course, we, we lay those plans down very lightly because it's all as the Lord wills. And we know we want him to be leading and to govern and, and direct us. And uh, we put these things out there prayerfully and the Lord can change them as he desires. But these are some things that we just felt on our heart yeah. that we want to be involved in and, and leading. And so we'll look just a, a little bit at, um, first of all, let's just look at some of the ministries that we do have going on right. within the church. You want to cover that? Sure, I can talk about okay. that. Um, we, of course, have um, children's ministry. We have Fort, which, um, you know, many of you do or do not know what that is, right? Yeah. Can you tell them what that is? Fort is a ministry that we've had for ages 4 to 11, and it stands for Finding Our Real Treasure, just opportunity to come together uh, with the young kids of the fellowship, and it's really open to all. We do different activities. We have some devotion time with them, but it's really open for all, um, every age as well. Families can take part in it together. Um, so there's some fun things going on, and uh, that's kind of been replacing right now our Calvary Kids, Kids Club, Club that we've had yeah, because of the happening facility midweek. issues, and, and we're hoping to go back to, to Calvary Kids Club yeah. in the future. But right now we've been doing Fort. Um, our Pre children's team. ministry goes on Sunday mornings as well. Yeah, and we have a great um, ministry taking place there. Thank you to all the Sunday school workers, nursery workers, and all the helpers in children's ministry because it's a vital. Um, important yeah. ministry in our church. It's a large ministry in our church, and we thank you to everybody that's been involved in that. And then we do have preteen and youth. I'm going excited on. about preteen and youth. Yeah, you know, because as a smaller church, we never really had a lot of that, and now we're seeing all these young people growing you know, up. They're getting older now, Ooh. and yeah. uh, you know, we got um, Paul found. Yeah, Brandon and Jen now have taken on the youth, and uh, they're having a lot of fun, and I think they're learning. They're doing a, lot a great about the job. Lord. Yeah. And it's great it's to exciting. see the young, young kids coming together, yeah. really having a heart for Jesus, a love for him and growing in those things, and just really being a great um, support to one another. So we're thankful for the ministry going on there. We have uh, Lady Study. Yeah, they don't um, let me go, so I don't know much about them. No, no. Nor, nor do I. Yeah. But we do have Lady Study that meets Tuesday, uh, as well as the third Friday of each month, and prayer happening Fridays. Um, so the ladies have lots of stuff going on. The men, we do a men's fellowship right. the third Saturday of each month. We just had ours this morning here and uh, that was a, good a time. great time. Was a good time. And so there's opportunity there. As we mentioned earlier, prayer goes on here Friday mornings in the ministry center, 6.30 to 7.30, open to all. Just drop in, come and go as you need. But uh, again, we see the importance of prayer. Uh, one thing we didn't mention in Life of the Fellowship was our worship ministry as well. We've got um, a lot going on there. We have some people that are definitely involved in that. Christina's leading mm -hmm. our worship teams, and um, we are, again, always asking if there's anybody that feels led in that area, whether it's singing or playing an instrument, come and talk to Christina, and uh, we'd love to see you be able to get involved. Um, and then soup and sandwich lunches that we I do love soup and sandwich. the first Sunday yeah. of each month. That we have communion Sunday, yeah. followed by after our service, lunch together, yeah. and that's a great time. Uh, awesome opportunity. If you have ever wanted to invite somebody out for church, you know, and you just kind of felt, I don't know if they'd really come, bring them to a soup and sandwich. It's just a great fun time afterwards, and uh, it's uh, cool. So again, thanks for the many people that helped that. Will Declare leads that area, and if you need to, mm -hmm. Will and John, if you need to talk to them about some things that you might want to do for that, let them know. Sure. But uh, 
great ministry there. And again, all these ministries that we have, we want to let you know that these are going on so that you can plug into them. But also these are opportunities for you if you're going, how can I serve yeah. in the church here? These are opportunities yeah, so for you easy ways just to, get involved. to step in yeah. and say, here's an area and a ministry that maybe i like to help lead or be involved in. Again, we never want to put the pressure on you. We want this to be something that the Lord is raising you up to do and, and leading in your heart to do. Um, if you don't feel that to do it, then we're not, we don't want you guys to be feeling obligated or guilted into something. This is as the Lord leads, but we, we want to communicate them so that you know what's going on in the church and to say, hey, that might be an area mm -hmm. I'd like to be yeah. either attending, being involved in, or helping to you know lead in a sense yeah. too. So yeah. those are things that you can uh, be aware of. <clears throat> what else do we have going on this week well, or this uh, year, I should this say? This year, Mexico mission trip, March yeah. 18th to the 28th. Now, I had a question for you. Okay. Are you, are you going? I am going. Yes. Because that, does that mean there'll be a Sunday when you're not here? That is correct. What does that mean? That means Pastor Ryan's going to be teaching. Great. And it means that the church is going to be packed that Sunday. Right. That's what it means. All right. Well, because everybody wants to come and hear you. I'm afraid you're going to say that. But anyway, uh, these anybody who's ever been on a Mexico missions trip doesn't come back the same way. No. They don't. No. You cannot go on one of these missions trips and not be affected by oh, yeah. what is going on in Mexico. Um, the real need and, and just how... Um, you know, as we talk about the body of Christ and what a need there is. I mean, yeah. just the simplest needs, um, yeah. caring for children. Sure. Um, you know, putting on like a little bazaar or whatever they do just to, to draw the crowds in. And you'll see, I remember we're out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's like desert. Oh, yeah. And you just feel little shanties <laughs> here and there. And we set up some music and worship. That was and awesome. We had some balloons. And, and all of a sudden, people start coming. And we're thinking, like, where are these people coming We're from? thinking, who's going to be yeah, here? Yeah, like, who's going to come like, and nobody. listen to this? Yeah. Next thing you know, the place is packed. Packed. Oh, and yeah. there you are being able to witness to these people and share with them. And, uh, and then when we go to the, um, the orphanages, yeah. uh, your heart's yeah. broken, yeah. really. I mean, if you don't understand or know the conditions down in Rosarito mm -hmm. when it comes to... Um, these orphanages, you can have, you can have thirty to forty babies, yeah. young toddlers, oh. that have one or two people who are trying to look after them. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's sad. It's difficult, and uh, you see these little faces, and you know uh, the difficulties that they have. And uh, I really encourage you guys, if you can go, go, because yeah. you will be you'll be blessed beyond measure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does give you a different outlook on yeah. life in general. Yeah. you know, look what happened to the Lees. Yeah. You know, right. change lives, and they're down there uh, living there now. Wow, yeah. it's amazing! And uh, that was fun just to see God work through them and how He changed their hearts so completely. Yeah, uh, just yeah. towards wanting to go from this lifestyle that we're living to just going and being a part of what's that's going right. on down there. So that's exciting. It's good. We also have the uh, Canadian Calvary Chapel Conference coming up. Mm. We do this every year. Uh, it's a three day. Uh, typically, it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yep. The speakers are awesome. Uh, every year we have guys come out. They're typically, they're Calvary Chapel pastors, yeah. senior pastors that, uh, you know, they come up and they uh, spend the three days with us just encouraging us and teaching us and um, just getting together with the whole body, oh, yeah. of all the Calvaries, and getting to see the churches. You know, when we talk about the body, we talk about our fellowship, but there's all these other Christians mm -hmm. out there in their yeah. own little fellowships. Sure. And, um, this is a chance just to see all the Calvaries that are around yep. and who's in them and what's going on in their exactly. lives and what are they doing and how can we be a part of that. And yep. It's an incredible time of teaching, being fed, being encouraged. Uh, I, yeah. I can't. It's we exciting. Got, uh, I, I have to take time off each And year. it's a great opportunity because here, you know, oftentimes we would love to do a getaway with a church yeah. and people that can come. This is now a retreat that we get to be a part of that's all set up for us. We just have to register and show up. And it's a and beautiful so facility. It's open for all, and we really encourage many of you in the church to come. And it provides us opportunity to just kind of come together, too, as a church group, and just to be able to pray for one another and just be a, a blessing to each other and just have a getaway, and as well as just being fed mm -hmm. uh, spiritually oh, yeah. and physically. Great food there. Yeah. Um, Don McClure and David Guzik. Bill Gallatin are the, the main speakers this year. You may not know them, but um, I've heard them. You've heard them. Yeah. They're great guys and uh, will really just bring a lot of great things for us to hear and, and to take to heart this year. So it'll be yeah, good. And one thing to, to mention is you don't have to go for the entire event. There you go. I typically drive there each, you know, yep. in the morning, go home at night. So if you need a ride, if you want to go for one day. One day. Uh, I'd be willing to pick you up. Take there you it. go. Perfect. So, um, awesome. You don't have to, you know, you can come up for an evening if yep. you want. So Exactly. So I encourage you to. Take plan some to, of it in. Plan to come to some of it. It'll be yeah. good. Um, 
what else we have going on this year? We are planning an apologetics conference with mm-hmm. Charlie Campbell. And Charlie Campbell has had a ministry um, going on for some time now, dealing with apologetics and speaking out on various uh, subjects from the you know, authenticity of the Bible to um, uh, Islam or Jehovah's Witness and um, all these different subjects. And he's got a great um, series of things. We're going to have him come up. To our church and uh, take a weekend, a Saturday night. He'll speak Sunday morning at church and then Sunday night. And uh, we're looking forward to having him come out. That's going to be June 22nd to 23rd. So be praying for that and uh, be ready to invite out some, some people you might like to for that conference. And then we are also planning another vacation Bible school. That's mm-hmm. going to be coming up in July again. This will be done at the school one more time. This may be the last time that we do it at the school. And uh, if we move in our new place. And so this is kind of like our our uh, swan song in a sense mm-hmm. because we've done now 10 of them this will be the 11th at the school and we've been able to have some great opportunity to reach out to the neighbors there and so um, this year is going to be um, kind of a night's theme like uh, sort of back in uh, you, you know like knights medieval yeah armor, knights yeah. in shining armor we're going to be going through the yeah. armor of god be and neat. it's going to yeah. be a great vbs so looking forward yeah. to that and Need then some set designers costume designers, oh yeah, yeah. And we'll do it do it up to the hilt so and then we have got a, uh, we're praying about family camp again, youth camp, because we had such fun last time, yeah. and it went well. Nobody got that hurt. No, exactly. Yeah. So we're considering doing that again yeah. this summer. And if there are some of you that would like to help organize that, or you know some great sites that might work, then you can feel free to let us know, and that'd be good. Um, coming up in October, we are doing another Israel tour, and this is an awesome opportunity to get away to, um, oh, Man, just to go and see mm-hmm. Israel, the yeah. Holy Land. What a neat opportunity yeah, that is. Yeah, if you get a chance to go, you have to go. Yeah. It is. It's incredible. Yeah. And we've been saying how, you know, with the way that things are shaping up these yeah, days, this, we never the know could be closing. if this is going to yeah. be our last opportunity to go. If the window's going to close up to where tourism is no longer happening over there, we never know. So this is an opportunity that we have to go. If you've been thinking about it, don't put it off because this may be the last chance. You never know. And uh, it's going to be great. We're having a meeting, some meetings coming up, so stay tuned on all those just to have some more information. Last thing we're going to talk about, and then we're going to be done here, is uh, something that's coming up in November, and it's called the My Hope with Billy Graham Outreach. And this is something that is a national thing. It's going right across Canada. And they've done this outreach in various countries in years previous, and they're targeting Canada now in November of 2013. And this is something that they're going to be training up churches and, and uh, Christians to be praying for, involved in, to be starting to share with neighbors, with friends, with family members, and to be just sharing the gospel with them. But it's all leading up to um, an outreach that's going to be taking place in November where we're going to be inviting those people that we've been kind of having dialogue with, inviting them mm-hmm. to our homes. Sounds exciting. And it's very intentional, very purposeful to where we're going to be open with them, that we want to be able to share with you our story and share with them the gospel, share with them the hope that we have in Jesus. We're not trying to surprise them with anything, but we want to invite them over for dinner or for a snack of some sort. And then we're going to be watching a a Billy Graham video, basically a mini crusade right in your own home. Hmm. And uh, it's an opportunity to to have the gospel shared by Billy Graham and uh, to be able to then share with those people just what the Lord's done in our own lives. And it's a very um, big plan just to get the gospel out to many people and that's something that we want to be involved in as a church and we're going to share a little video in a second here just to kind of give you a bit of a promo about it here but our desire is to really get involved as a church in outreach we've done in the past street witnessing and Mm -hmm. i like to see that happening more and and just being very intentional in going out as a church to get the gospel out and to share with people about jesus christ and that's important that we are doing that as a church, spreading outside of our walls and our doors and not just thinking that it's all about Sundays coming mm-hmm. together, but yeah. it's we're gathering together at various times so that we can go out into the world and win the world for Jesus. That's what we want to mm-hmm. keep before us. That's going back to no grow show, isn't yeah. it? And so that's the purpose. So let's watch this video um, about the My Hope with Billy Graham, and then we'll uh, wrap it up after that. My Hope with Billy Graham is a massive nationwide outreach. Individual Christians like you will look around and reach out in love to your friends, family, and neighbors who don't know Jesus Christ. 
You'll make a list and look up in prayer every day for each person. As you prepare, look out for opportunities to build your relationships. In November 2013, you'll look forward and invite those individuals to your home or other event. After refreshments, you'll watch a special program with music, stories, and Billy Graham's presentation of the gospel. You'll have the training you need to share how Jesus gives you hope and ask your guests to pray and place their faith in Christ. You'll be equipped to look after new believers with Bible study guides and connect them to your church. Millions of Christians have done this across the globe, and so can you. Go to the website and get involved today. Okay, so there you go. Right. There's the video, and uh, we hope you'll be considering we'll be that. Yeah. We'll be talking more about that. Ram and Donna Cassio are going to be overseeing that uh, area of My Hope, and so you can talk to them if you have more questions, and we'll hopefully have some more opportunity for training mm-hmm. and just getting people prepared for that outreach. You'll be hearing more about it. So thanks for listening and tuning in, and we hope that this has helped to kind of fill in some holes for you about our church, what we're about, and just things that are going on here. And if you do have any questions, please come and talk to Pastor Randy or myself. We'd love to share more with you, and feel free to engage us over certain things that you might be thinking about or have questions about. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. All right, thanks.